Pete, Joe, congratulations, you've made it into the final. Now we're sending you back to your home forges where you will have to forge an iconic blade from history. Are you ready to see what that weapon is? Oh yeah, yes, absolutely. The Pandat. Oh. Ho! The Pandat is a two-handed sword carried into battle by the Dyaks, a group of tribes that have lived on the island of Borneo for thousands of years. Though most Dyak weapons doubled as useful tools, the Pandat was only used in war. Forged from iron, the Pandat features an angled blade and can be swung downwards with two hands. An iron cross piece was inserted through a hole at the end of the handle, protecting the user's hand. The blade was sometimes decorated with hair or rattan plant. Until the early 20th century, Dayak raiders plundered coastal settlements for resources, money, and even enemy heads, proving just how deadly this weapon could be. Good luck, bladesmiths. We'll see you in five days. This is home in Jinx, Oklahoma. It's going to be hot. It's going to be humid. But I'm not worried about anything other than an accident or the unforeseen. I mean, have never seen this blade. I've never even heard of it. A uh, little apprehensive about building it. Five days, it seems like a lot of time. But to build a piece like this, it's going to be really, really hard. Come on, stay with me. Don't, don't power out on me what's going on. Oh, wow. Well, I haven't seen it rain this hard in a long time, y'all. I mean, this is this is kind of intense. Oh, sh okay. Oh, sh OK. Yeah, boys. Um, damn it! Go, go, go. Stay where you're at. Do not move. Midway through day one, everything's going great. And boom. Amazing storm hits. I mean, this thing was unreal. There was some damage done. We had a lot of trees down, took out, of course, the, the meter and the power lines. Doesn't look like we're going to get power back anytime soon. So we're going to get a generator. We're going to get it pumped up. We're going to get power and juice back in the shop. And then we're going to move forward. Yay! We have power! And this was a pretty good setback. It's reality check to go, hey, you sure you got what it takes to do this? Today is day three, and I've been told it's Saturday. It's going to be a cutting test, it's going to be a strength test, it's going to be a keel test, too. So I want to draw my spine back so it's a little softer, so it's got a little bit of flex. So I rigged up kind of an ancient way to do it. I've dug a trench to keep the edge cool so it, it won't get soft. I've really been fighting the wind with it, about as fast as you get it warmed up, it cools down. I also have to keep water in the trench. When you've got a very hot torch blasting against the water, it evaporates rather quickly. I'm not sure I'm going to get it done. Day four, either we top the hill or we roll down another one. Today's a make or break day for this blade. We're going to quench this thing and uh, hope for the best. And hopefully your best is good enough. Doing this is about as nerve-wracking as it gets. <laughs> you just want everything to go nice and smooth. It did harden, but I got crazy-ass warpage right there. It's a bit of a kick in the pants. We're running out of time. Grind, grind, grind. That's what it's going to come down to, and hopefully get that warp out. Bladesmiths, this is the sharpness test. To see how sharp your weapons are, I will attempt to cut through these web of ropes with three identical strikes. If they're sharp, I should meet no resistance. Joey, you're up first. Are you ready? Let's do it. Well, Joe. All the weight is at the tip of the blade. So when I come down, it wants to draw me forward. And the recovery is a little bit harder on the way back. You have a sharp edge over here that I almost met no resistance. Overall, sir, your blade will cut. Pete, you're up next. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. Oh. 
Okay, Pete, it is a sharp blade. The balance is light. You have a lighter blade here. It's not as heavy to pull forward. It's a good job. The only issue I have is that I kind of ran out of handle here. I would have liked to see a little pummel here or probably even a, a longer handle so it's easier to control and not feel like I'm at the end of my rope, so to say. Overall, this weapon, sir, will cut. Thank you. All right, bladesmiths, next up is a kill test. Now, the Pandat was a weapon used by headhunting tribes in Borneo. To see how lethal your weapon is, I will take your Pandat and I will deliver one blow to this carcass. Let's see how much damage your weapon can do. Joe, you're up first. You ready? Bring it. Let's do it. Woo! Yeah. OK, Joe, the balance feels so forward heavy that when you slice through this carcass, it pulled me into it and cut cleanly all the way through. This weapon, sir, will kill. Good job. Thank you. Pete, you're up next. You ready? Yes, I am. OK, Pete, the difference with your blade is that it's light. And because it's light, I can use velocity to help cut through this carcass. This weapon, sir, will kill. Good job. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, this is the strength test. To test the strength and durability of your blades, we're going to hook them into our machine here, which is going to chop into this bundle of sugar cane. Now, if your blades are tempered properly, they should cut into the cane without a problem. If not, we might get them to bend, warp, Well, we'll see what happens. And Joe, you're already rigged up on the machine. You ready to go? Let's go. All right, let's do this. All right, Joe. Three, two, one. All right, so Joe, now I want to pull this out of the machine. There's a bit of a bend right here in the Ricasso, kind of a gap right along the edge of the blade in the guard. It had that warp when it got here. It had that warp when it got here? It was actually offset. It's got a little bit of a twist, maybe a five degree twist. I couldn't get it out whenever I built it. Well, it may have gotten bigger during that test. Overall, the edge held up fine, no damage whatsoever. It's got a good shape. Good job. Thanks, sir. All right, Pete, you're all locked in. You ready for this? I am. All right. All right, Pete. Three, two, one. All right, Pete. And you can actually see how much this blade flexed when it went into the, into the cane and came back to true, which is always what I want to see. Definitely sharp. Well put together. Feels good. All right, well done, Pete. Thank you. Gentlemen, this is one of the tightest competitions that we've had. It's exactly what we want from our bladesmiths. It was a difficult decision, but that final decision has been made. The Forged and Fire champion is Pete, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion. Joe, please surrender your weapon. This experience has taught me, like many things in life, to try. Dare to fail. If you fail, so what? Feeling kind of disappointed right now, but eh, at least I tried. Pete, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion, and we'll be receiving that check for 10 grand. Good job. Thank you. Pete, what I really liked about your blade, amongst many things, is you know I wanted to grab that thing and cut something with it. And when I felt it, it I mean, it gives you the woo to strike. You know, it, it really does want to cut. How are you feeling right now, Pete? I feel pretty good. I'm feeling like I could just roll on the floor and bust out laughing. It feels real good. It feels real good to win. I'm going home, the Forge and Fire champion. And I know all 24 of my grandkids are going to be excited for Grandpa. 